Welcome to the Everest uh, Technical Steering Committee call of the 21st of August. As always, we start with the antitrust policy notes. I'll leave that here for a sec for everybody to uh, read it and, and uh, think about it a bit. If you have any questions, uh, let me know. But looking at who is here, I think all of us have seen this before. So I think we can continue quite quickly. Uh, agenda for today. So quick recap for probably people that are uh, looking at the recording. What is Everest and what is new? What's next? And then, uh, yeah, time for discussion. Uh, that part won't be recorded. So if you look at the recording, that won't be in there. Join us next time if you want to discuss something with us. So what is Everest? Everest is part of Linux Nation Energy, which is an industry consortium of companies working in the industry in the energy uh, industry, uh, working on creating a, a more open and a green electricity grid. And uh, Everest is one of the core components uh, down in the infrastructure, really hardware that is working in in uh, in this landscape. Um, EV charging is a complex landscape, and EVs take a lot of energy and need to work with a lot of other systems as well, which what makes EV chargers really the core of the system. Um, a lot of effort has been going into developing software in the last couple of years um, to make charger software. Um, everybody's doing the same thing, so let's make this open source. Let's make this uh, one standard software stack. Um, saves a lot of energy and makes things much more uh, compliant and consistent. Um, Everest itself is a modular charging stack for making EV chargers. Um, we try to cover roughly 80% of anything that you need in the charging station, a bit depending on what type of charger you're making. So yeah, um, it needs to run on some hardware, so you will need an integration layer with your hardware. And you will need some, uh, if you have a display, some display, some user interface, which isn't built by Everest. This is really what should make your own charger unique. That is what you need to make. But anything in the middle, any any protocol that needs to be implemented, that's all part of Everest, all the state machines, all the functionality. Um, it's modular and it's customizable. And we try to cover as many use cases as possible. So if you want to make a very simple, AC wall box that should be possible, but if you want to make a very complex, high power DC charger with multiple sockets, energy management, including taking into account the solar canopy, all of that should be possible with Everest. That's a, that's a goal. Um, we connect to a lot of different services, so we connect to the electricity grid, as I said, solar. Um, we can take in home energy consumption, talk to other chargers, talk to the vehicle really in the middle of where the energy grid touches uh, consumers of energy. Um, yeah, we didn't want to add more standards. There's a lot of standards out there already. Um, a lot of them are implemented by a lot of companies. We wanted to do a very good implementation of all those open standards, make that open source so everybody can use that and that make that the de facto standard. Um, you're really happy to see that the community around Everest is growing. We have more and more companies now uh, also contributing to uh, to Everest. Um, so really heading into the, the right direction to become uh, the de facto uh, standard uh, for charging station software. Uh, if you want to start working with Everest, you need hardware. Um, we have a open hardware project, um, which can really help you develop quicker. Um, all of this is open, the hardware, the firmware, you can just download it and build it yourself, even the housing, or you can uh, buy it from us uh, if, you, if you need a reference platform uh, for development purposes uh, to get you started. Um, Everest runs on a lot of different hardware, um, different manufacturers of, of chips, of modules, of development boards, of uh, charge controllers that um, can run Everest. Um, we, ha we have one of the guys here in the call uh, from ChargeByte. Um, we try to support as much hardware as possible, different chips, different um, smart meters. Uh, more is coming. Uh, we hope to mention a lot more of companies that we are working with. Um, this is our broad community at the moment. 
and we are growing quickly. We still have a couple, a lot of projects that we can't name yet that are still uh, under NDA, but hopefully we can uh, mention uh, more and more soon. Um, really looking forward to be able to mention some of the companies that we are working with uh, at the moment. What's new? Um, Julian, maybe something for you to mention here. Anything to say about this? Um, I'm in the car right now, so the ah. only thing I have in the back of my head is maybe um, we are working on an online shop uh, so you can buy the media box and all this kit much easier. But that is uh, not yet finished, so I think there uh, will be a visual announcement uh, soon. Yep, yep, thanks. Yeah, um, yeah indeed, now you have to send us an email. We are working on a web shop make things easier to buy. Uh, we also made, that's what the slide is about, we made the 3D files of the Beelie box available. Um, so if you want to make the parts as well on a 3D printer, uh, we do that ourselves as well. You can just download the files and uh, start printing. Um, OSP 2.01, um, Guy, some topic for you, or do you want me to do that? Yeah, sure. No. Um, as always, we've been hard at work at, uh extending our OCPP 2.0.1 uh, implementation. Some things uh, like that are of note here is that uh, we now have a persistent message queue for transaction-related messages included. Um, we can migrate to new CSMS, and we support some new messages like unlock connector and um, trigger messages. And there's some uh, yeah ongoing refactoring uh, we will uh, separate the device model implementation in libocpp uh, into a new library, as well as the security-related operations, because we uh, found out that we can uh, reuse some of that functionality within Everest itself. So it only makes sense to um, put that into a separate library, which will probably be released uh, within the coming weeks. Thanks. Yeah, and the team working on this is also growing. It's a, a lot of people now are working on this, which uh, really speeds up the development of 2.0.1. It's really uh, good to see the energy. Uh, Exigen, Exi Codec, uh, Martin, anything to say on that? Uh, still, we are on that work. Uh, and uh, yeah, still working on remaining known issues. Um, we. Uh, yeah, we are we're starting first integrating in, 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 in several implementations. So yeah, nothing new to add. So yeah. Thanks. Uh Ethos framework, Kai, Julian. No. Yeah, um, we we just I'm not sure if, if we will make this release, but we just um, added a new um, probe module support in Everest Framework, which is used for um, for testing. Um, before that, we we kind of had a bit of a hacky solution with a Python module that needed all kinds of interfaces defined uh, in in Everest Core, and we kind of uh, thought that isn't the way to go. We're kind of removing that module again and. Uh, yeah, adding support for um, this directly into the framework. So uh, you can write tests using um, this, I'd say like virtual module where you can add all kinds of uh, requirements and, and provides to it. So you can test all, all kinds of uh, parts of the, the Everest system. Cool, useful. Uh, new release then? Yeah, and uh, as always, uh, the new release is just around the corner, will be released in, in the coming days. Uh, we added uh, the high level communication sleep mode in this update, uh, finally updated some uh, some dependencies um, of Everest. Uh, what else is of note? Yeah, um, we added an option for low power uh, DC charging as well, and lots of more bug fixes and uh, yeah. As I just said, it'll be released in, in the coming days. Looking forward to the uh, Charon Festival next time uh, to test the uh, high-level communication sleep uh, in real life. We know that the trucks are uh, really looking forward to test this, and they had nobody to test it with. So it would be nice to, uh, to be able to do that. 
what's next? Roadmap. Um, no big changes on the roadmap. Uh, actively working on uh, OCP 2.0.1, uh, the XE parser, and uh, yeah, 1508 20 uh, should start soon. Um, and for next year, um, yeah, a lot of stuff that we want to do, uh, nothing changed on the roadmap here. Um, OCP timeline, also no changes. Um, really actively working with this growing team on 2.0.1. So really convinced that we get uh, core functionality by the end of the year and then start adding uh, new functionality uh, very quickly, uh, including also the new functionality for the upcoming OCP 2.1 uh, release. Um, 11 a timeline updates. Don't think so, Kai. Same one as last time. Yeah, I think it's the same. Uh, upcoming events. So when I meet us uh, next week, ICNC. Uh, I will be there with uh, Marco, Yvonne, and Rolf. I just heard that Martin and Charles White will also be there with a couple of people. So yeah, if you're you are at ICNC, just come over. Uh, we have a small booth. We do just some demos with the micro megawatt charger and the belay box. Um, we, uh, at least I know Marco is at the drop in September. Um, then we will be with a team at the OSP festival uh, in Arnhem. Um, then everybody welcome. Uh, please send us an email if you want to join us. Uh, we have an Everest summit uh, in uh, at our office in uh, Bad Schönborn in Germany on the 5th of October, um, meeting us, working together, doing a hackathon, uh, presentations, having a drink, uh, having some food, and uh, yeah, just get to know the, the community. Um, then after that, we are heading off to Valen Valencia for a couple of days testing at uh, with Charin Festival. So testing with the vehicles again on the 1511.8 site. Um, and then just announced is a Charin event in the US end of November. Um, so, yep, we will be over everywhere testing and at interesting events. So looking forward to uh, yeah some useful testing and, and meeting a lot of people. Uh, yeah, just uh, already said, Ever Summit, if you want to join, uh, go to this URL or scan the QR code and uh, sign up and, and, and join us. We're looking forward to, to meeting a lot of people. Uh, next technical steering committee is the 28th of September. Um, and now the rest of the time, um, yeah, we will use to discuss. Uh, I will stop the recording for this.